Beginning in 1830, the country of Algeria was ruled under the French colonial system. But in 1954, tensions which had been brewing beneath the surface came to a head and violence erupted. The intense fighting continued for almost 10 years, including many illegal acts of war on the part of France. In 1962, however, Algeria gained its independence through the Evian Agreements and a self-determination referendum. In March of that year, the Algerian people flooded the streets in celebration of their newfound freedom. After the joy of the moment passed, the hard work of governing the new nation started in earnest. What emerged was a battle of ideas concerning the national identity of the young country. People began to feel like the ruling secular coalition was not delivering on the promises of independence. Finally, in 1988, thousands of students began to riot in the city of Alger. The riots soon spread to other cities, and by the time they ended, seven days later, close to 500 protesters had died. The civil unrest continued to mount, and by December of 1991, it had erupted into all-out civil war. Martyrs Square, Algiers city centre, June the 5th. Campaigning in the Arab world's first free multi-party elections ended here in tear gas and shooting. Whole villages were destroyed and children and babies were murdered in the streets. The mental scars earned during that time are still felt by those who lived through it. During the course of the war, a total of approximately 5,498 individual attacks occurred, initiated by both the government and Islamist groups. In Tibherin, the capital city of Medea province, a small monastery named Abbey of Our Lady of Atlas was home to a small group of nine monks. At the onset of the war, the brothers who lived at the abbey decided it would be better to stay and stand in solidarity with their Muslim neighbors, rather than run for safety. In the early morning hours of March 27, 1996, members of the Armed Islamic Group, or GIA, entered the monastery and kidnapped seven of the monks. Reports vary in the date, but the monks were either executed on May 3rd or May 21st. Curiously, there does not seem to be a reason for their capture or killing. They were members of the Order of St. Benedict, a group which devotes its time to silence and prayer. They were known to help their neighbors with health concerns and were friendly with the local people. In recent years, however, new evidence has come to light which points to a disturbing reason the monks may have been targeted. It appears that in an effort to gain sympathy from the general population, it is believed that the secular government created numerous front groups which committed acts of violence against their own citizens in the name of the Islamists. It is alleged that one of these groups was responsible for the death of the brothers of Atlas Abbey. So, when a group of people faithfully serve their community and uphold the precepts of their religion, why is there no protection from a god who claims absolute authority? If there was justice in this world, surely these men would have been spared an early death. But what if we consider one of the many gifts given to us by our Creator, free will. We were given the agency to determine our own destiny. But when we were given the power to control our own lives, it came with the awesome responsibility of doing so, knowing we could impact others. Unfortunately, not everyone makes choices which honor the trust placed in our hands. When this happens, it can sometimes be catastrophic. In this case, Seven peaceful monks were used as pawns in a game they did not realize they were playing. So where is God in this tragic story? She's found in the aftermath. She's found in the restored relationships with their community. She's found in the conversations with pilgrims. And in the voices of the brothers who gave up their life. 
only to have their work carry on after they were silenced. <laughs>